Good morning, St. John's, and welcome to our third Sunday in Lent. Uh, this week, we'll be discussing one of the most important, in fact, one of the earliest windows in the cathedral, the, uh, the Louis Comfort Tiffany Good Shepherd window on the west wall of the cathedral. The Good Shepherd window is one of the most ancient subjects in Christian art. It is also common in American religious art, um, especially in stained glass windows like ours. The Good Shepherd window at St. John's is both the cathedral's oldest stained glass window and one of the most artistically important. The window was designed and executed by the studio of Louis Comfort Tiffany, the famous uh, stained glass maker and installed in 1907, just a few years after the dedication of the cathedral and its rebuilding following the Great Fire of Jacksonville. It was dedicated in memoriam to Daniel Cooley Ambler and his wife, Laura Moss Ambler. Artistically, the window is um, typical of Tiffany's unique decorative style and is comparable to the more pictorial types of Renaissance stained glass, as opposed to medieval stained glass, uh, which inspired many of the windows we've discussed so far, including the nave and transept windows, which have the qualities of a, uh, a Gothic glass in England and France from the 14th and 15th centuries. The Tiffany window, on the other hand, is much more uh, Renaissance inspired, much more pictorial, and has a clear and lucid central pictorial design in the main part of the window. The scene depicting the Good Shepherd extends in a continuous landscape across the three lancets that compose the window, and it is not disrupted by window tracery uh, by the internal frames of the window, like in uh, many of our other um, uh, windows at St. John's. The theme of the Good Shepherd derives its significance from numerous passages of scripture both from the Old and the New Testaments, that compare God and Christ to a shepherd. And the most important source for this idea is perhaps John 10, 11, in which Christ declares, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. These words foreshadow Christ's crucifixion and portray Christ as the shepherd who sacrifices himself to protect his flock from the wolf and from death. The parable of the lost sheep in Luke tells of a shepherd with a flock of a hundred sheep from which one had strayed. The shepherd in the parable leaves the other 99 to search for the lost sheep and he rejoices at finding it for quote, there is more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over the 99 who need no repentance. Luke 15, seven. Psalm 23, one of the most famous famously declares, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack for nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. It's Psalm 23 one through four. This imagery of sheep, shepherds, and flocks supplies some of the most common symbolic and metaphoric images of God, the church, and his followers. Flock is still a common metaphor for congregation. Pastor, a common word for an ordained minister, is taken directly from the Latin word for shepherd. Bishops and abbots traditionally carry croziers a type of staff based on the ancient shepherd's crook, which we see depicted here in our window in the hands of the good shepherd. Or as we see here uh, in the image of a bishop from the uh, late middle ages, the 15th century uh, with his mitre and his bishop's crook or crozier with the curving head, now decorative and ornamental and in the image at least covered in gold much more beautiful and fine than the humble shepherd staff, but nevertheless evoking its shape and its symbolism as an artifact of the shepherd as an icon of protection. We're here in this actual crozier head enameled and gilded 
depicting Saint Michael defeating the dragon, uh, an image which combines the idea of the shepherd as a protector whose staff defends against the wolf with the biblical image from the book of Revelation of the archangel Michael defeating and casting out the dragon, the Satan, the satanic serpent from heaven. However, um, despite these, the uh, image of Christ as a shepherd entails much more than the simple idea that he is a protector. A shepherd is not simply a protector. He is a kind of servant, and specifically a very low caste and base kind of servant. Shepherds in the ancient world were commonly people with very low social status, poor, young, dirty, and uneducated. Shepherds lived like the beasts of the field over whom they watched. We recall that Christ's ancestor, for instance, David, was a shepherd. When the prophet Samuel came to see the sons of Jesse, as we see in this image here, uh, expecting to find the next king of Israel, David, the youngest, was away tending the sheep. Jesse showed Samuel all of his bright, handsome, uh, older sons, and Samuel found none of them to be appropriate or fitting to be anointed. No one expected the lowly young shepherd boy to be chosen, so David was not even called in from the fields to meet Samuel. When Christ was born, we see David out here in the fields with his harp and his animals. Uh, when Christ was born, the angel of the Lord carried the news to three kings in the different corners of the earth, but also to the shepherds. The highest and the lowest, kings and shepherds, as a sign that Christ was a born as a savior to all. We see here in a famous uh, uh, painting from the Northern Renaissance by Hugo van der Goes, the Portinari altarpiece, uh, an image of the adoration of the shepherds who are depicted here in the back corner. And you can see they're dressed shabbily, they are rough, uh, there's dirt under their fingernails, and uh, they have rather uncouth appearances compared to what we imagine to be the lofty kings who are coming to visit as well. For Christ to call himself a shepherd, as he does in scripture, is thus an expression and perhaps even a shocking one that mingles authority and humility. The idea of the Lord as a shepherd, as in the language of Psalm 23, is a kind of poetic antithesis. The master is a servant. We are the defenseless sheep dependent on him. Some of those who heard Christ's word in scripture were indeed upset, and they threatened to stone him because of the way he spoke and because he promised, quote, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. It's John 10, 27 to 28. Christ built in these words on the image of the shepherd as a protector who guards his flock from danger, portraying himself as a savior who would protect his flock from death itself. Many of those who heard these words thought that this was blasphemy. It was this symbolic association of the shepherd with the promise of protection from death, uh, Christ's promise of salvation, that made the image of the good shepherd so popular in early Christian culture. And the earliest image of the good shepherd actually dates to the third century AD, before the legalization of Christian uh, religion by Constantine the Great. In this era, uh, as in this uh, sarcophagus from the early third century here, where the good shepherd is depicted in the center, the early, uh, in this era, the Christianity was still subject to persecution, and both Jews and pagans viewed Christians with mistrust and suspicion. And partly in consequence of this difficult climate for Christian devotion, many of the earliest symbols and references to Christ in Christian art and theology emphasized stories or ideas that were already common or widely accepted religious symbols in the ancient world. Shepherds, lambs, wine, grapes, and other Christian symbols were also common to other religious traditions. For instance, in ancient art, the Creophorus, or the ram or lamb bearer, uh, a figure carrying a ram or a sheep around its shoulders, is identical to early Christian images of the good shepherd bearing the sheep back to its flock. The Creophorus uh, served to commemorate a religious sacrifice in ancient religion, a meaning that was related to the idea of the shepherd who sacrifices himself to protect his sheep and that's related also to the image of Christ as the sacrificial lamb. 
the image of the Good Shepherd was thus a familiar and popular, accessible, symbolic representation of Christ in early Christian art. Though its connection to the various ideas of death, sacrifice, and commemoration served above, surveyed above, uh, through these connections, it was an image that was almost always associated with tomb and funerary art, especially in the catacombs in early Christianity. In the third century catacomb of Priscilla in Rome, for instance, a painting of Christ as the Good Shepherd adorns the ceiling of a chamber known as the cubiculum of the Good Shepherd. The shepherd stands between two sheep with a third around its, uh, his, uh, uh, his shoulders. In his right hand, he holds out a bucket of water, the water of life, offered to the deceased buried in the catacomb. The image visually repeats Christ's promise to protect his followers from death. Though the earthly bodies of the inhabitants of the tomb have died, Christ offers them eternal life in heaven and offers to protect and shepherd their souls to the afterlife. The image of the shepherd is linked here to a depiction of the Old Testament story of the prophet Jonah, in fact, who was swallowed by a whale-like monster, the Leviathan, the Leviathan who lives in the abyss in the deepest, deepest depths of the sea, uh, was a symbol of hell and of the tomb in ancient and medieval culture. Miraculously, however, as we see here, the image of the whale uh, disgorging Jonah. Um, Jonah emerged from the belly of the whale after three days, whole and alive. This Old Testament story was understood by early Christians as a prophetic foreshadowing of Christ's own death and resurrection and of the strength of Christ's promise to his, his followers of eternal life. A famous early Christian sarcophagus from the early fourth century AD known as the sarcophagus of the Good Shepherd connects the shepherd theme to imagery of eternal life. The creophorus type of the Good Shepherd with the lamb around his shoulders um, that is depicted three times, probably in reference to the three parts of the Trinity. While little winemaking putti or cupids harvest grapes from the vines that decorate the face of the sarcophagus, grapes and wine were common symbols of resurrection or life after death in ancient culture that like the story of Jonah served to emphasize the theme of salvation and the promise of eternal life associated with the image of the Good Shepherd. It's interesting, an interesting feature of the depiction of the Good Shepherd, that the Good Shepherd is so common in early Christian art where it stood as a kind of a discrete symbol for Christ. That is at a, at a time before Christ and his crucifixion could be represented uh, explicitly because Christianity was still a new and initially an illegal religion in the Roman Empire, the Good Shepherd stood as a symbolic counterpart for Christ. Because Christ had him called himself the shepherd, the image of the shepherd was a way of representing Christ without explicitly making that uh, connection clear. The shepherd stood as a symbol. Then in the later Middle Ages, uh, when it became normal to represent Christ and the crucifixion and to tell the story of Christ's life directly in pictures, the Good Shepherd becomes a less common subject. Uh, medieval artists no longer needed the symbol in the same way that the early Christian ones did. It's an interesting phenomenon then that the Good Shepherd makes a reappearance in Christian art around the time of the Reformation. And it becomes increasingly common in the 16th century, as we see here in an early Reformation era print by Sable Bayham, the Good Shepherd depicted in a print. This is a popular art form that would have been cheap and accessible to ordinary people of all types. And we can see the shepherd here in the foreground, who's quite clearly Christ wearing uh, the crown of thorns and a cross is propped up in the background, making that explicit connection between Christ and the Good Shepherd. But here at this moment of religious strife and conflict, especially in Protestant culture, which was trying to distinguish itself from uh, uh, the medieval uh, uh, tradition of the universal, universal church, there's a return to the Good Shepherd as a parable and as a symbolic representation of Christ. As we see here, for instance, in a great painting by the artist Peter Bruegel depicting the parable of the Good Shepherd that is of the shepherd who will sacrifice his own life to protect the flock. In the window at St. John's, the good shepherd represents these same ideas through a variety of modern symbols, 
The figure of Christ as the Good Shepherd stands in the center panel, clad in a red outer garment, somewhat like a chasuble, over a green undergarment, like a cassock. In other words, he's not dressed as a shepherd exactly. He does, however, wear a type of kathia, uh, that is a head covering common in Middle Eastern attire, and often featured in modern nativities as the headgear of the shepherds. The kafia is never seen in ancient medieval or Renaissance depictions of the Good Shepherd, uh, but it reflects a modern concept of the historical attire of a biblical shepherd. The haloed figure in our window carries a traditional shepherd's crook, and his hands are clasped prayerfully uh, as he turns his eyes toward heaven. This also is characteristic not of medieval Christian art um, or early Christian art. The Good Shepherd here. Um, uh, the Good Shepherd was a symbolic aspect of Christ in early Christianity, an era during which religious symbolism was highly developed. Early Christian and medieval art was not intended to convey or to provoke emotions or to be aesthetically beautiful, although it could be. It was a means of expressing complex theological and devotional ideas. So the soulful expression of the yearning heavenward gaze of Tiffany's Good Shepherd is meant to satisfy the modern viewer, and it has no reference to historical medieval or Christian art. Um, as an artwork that excites religious feeling and appeals to our sense of beauty without requiring any sophisticated symbolic knowledge, it's a very modern work of art. The Good Shepherd figure stands with two sheep in a field of white flowers in a landscape set against purple mountains and a sunset or dawn sky in which the golden tones of heavenly light contribute along with these other details to our perception of soulful beauty in this window. All of the elements are symbolic, much like the images of Jonah and the grapes that often accompanied the Good Shepherd in early medieval art. But one hardly needs to recognize these symbols to appreciate their meaning. Flowers are associated naturally with beauty and life. Sunset and dawn are beautiful moments in time that we associate with the coming of night, the beginning of a new day. We hardly need to know that flowers, that the flowers in this window are Easter lilies, modern symbols of Easter and of the resurrection, um, to appreciate that the flowers are hopeful in meaning. Likewise, we hardly need to know that the window in, in the western wall of the church facing the direction of the setting sun is located in a part of the church symbolically connected to the idea of death. Since antiquity, all churches in the western world have traditionally been constructed on an axis from west to east. And the altar in the eastern part of the church facing toward Jerusalem the Western entry to the church is thus traditionally associated with death and with judgment, while the East is associated with heaven and salvation. In this line, it is apparent that the sky in the Good Shepherd window is a sunset, a sign of the end, while the hopeful gaze of the shepherd and the abundantly flowering lilies are symbols of resurrection and of the promise of eternal life. Above the shepherd's head, the green canopy of a verdant tree suggests a reference to the tree of life and perhaps to the wood of the cross by which Christ sacrificed himself, the good shepherd, to save us. In sum, though it is modern in its iconography, the good shepherd window at St. John's is consistent in meaning with the most ancient representations of the subject in the tombs of the early Christians. The shepherd is he who lays down his life to save his flock whose sacrifice carries with it the promise of life, the funerary and memorial function of the window dedicated to the memories of Daniel Ambler and his wife revives one of the most ancient and hopeful symbols of Christian religion and connects St. John's Cathedral across the centuries to the religious commemorations and faith of the earliest Christians. A wonderful window in our beautiful cathedral. Thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you again next week.